Let's just have a look at the scene in 3D. And we have a box. Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be checking out the Godot engine. I'm not familiar with this at all, so I'm gonna be winging this and taking a look at basically making a hello world and trying to get the editor up and running and maybe see how the code environment looks and what sort of language they work with. So the first thing I did was download the engine for uh, my computer, so I've got that installed already. And I wanted to look through some of the introduction documentation and I also wanted to recommend that if you are looking at doing something new, always check out the introduction documentation. It, it seems to get your brain in the right frame of mind for learning this new thing that you are about to learn and, and embark on the, the, whatever new journey you're trying to do. So I always like to pick a couple of little interesting points and maybe things that I know to look for first and then try to piece it together you know, along the way. So just so you have like, you know, it's basically just getting your feet wet for the for the game engine and what to expect. Um, and it looks like the language is called GD script. I have no familiarity with it, but it does look like it is object oriented according to the docs. And it the engine looks like it does support C sharp. Where did I see that? Uh, if we go back to the introduction, yeah, so I guess this is the first look at the editor. So that looks pretty good. This screenshot set, uh, looks like it's using Visual Studio Code. Um, I, I guess they prefer e that or Emacs uh, for GD script, which is good because I already use Visual Studio Code um, and, and they do support C Sharp. It says they only support Visual Studio for C Sharp on Windows. So I don't, I, I hope that means Visual Studio and that doesn't mean they only support C Sharp on Windows. Um, that would be unfortunate for me as I'm on a Mac but it looks like maybe Visual Studio Code will give me C Sharp support. If you come down a little bit here to the programming languages, it says they do support C or C++. So depending on what type of language you're familiar with, maybe choose one that makes sense. I would actually like to try to learn their default language or their, because it says it's specifically and tightly integrated, I was just thinking about digging in with the GD script and maybe let's just learn something new. Uh, so I got it downloaded. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up and see what happens. All right, so I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. It looks like I don't have any projects locally because it's the first time I'm opening it. So let's check out their asset library. Okay, and right off the bat, you can see there's a couple pages of assets right here. I would just like to pick something really easy to just get up and running, basically just do a hello world. So let's, let's look at this quality first person controller. I always like to start with something like a third person or first person controller. Actually, did they have a third person one? I don't know why it says .NET. That might mean it's written in C Sharp. Yeah, here you go. It's it's written in C Sharp. I really want to try to stick with something that's written in the, the GD script. So I'm assuming that this, where did it go? This is not written in C Sharp. So let's just, let's just take this and, and have a look at, at what it is. I'm going to go ahead and download that. So let's just call this Godot or Godot. I don't, I'm not really sure the pronunciation here. Hello world. Okay, and then let's create a folder. Godot, hello world. And we'll just use that. Install and edit. Okay, let's see. All right, look at that. So it's bringing up the editor right now. And this is my true first look at it. Uh, so I'm excited to get in here. And here's that typical capsule that you see with all these hello worlds normally. And, and I'm, I'm trying to move this with my unity muscle memory. And of course it is not working, but I guess I can middle mouse and look around and scroll in and out. These are the little things that you'll have to spend the first couple days getting used to. So I, I just want to play this and see what happens. And this is a 3D project. Okay, so can we just edit right in place? I'm guessing .gd is the extension that we'll have for all these script files and for this game engine. And I'm guessing that you can edit in place with this editor and, and maybe, you know, these are the things I just have no idea. So let's go back to 3D. Let's try to run this and see what happens. I'm guessing we click there. I think this is, looks like our console debugger log down at the bottom. Okay, so the game screen it just shows up. So then it looks like we'll just leave this floating. Maybe that's just how this works. You just have to 
Wait, so I'm actually, I'm actually in the, I'm actually the player right now, but oh, there we go. I had to hit escape. I had to get it. I had to hit escape to get the mouse to be captured again by the game. Okay. So I got a little bit of jump functionality. So whoever put this together did a really good job of just making a basic hello world for a first person controller. Put some walls in there just to give you an idea that, yeah, this is, this is a starting point. And I always love starting super basic. Why, why get advanced? Just pick the easiest thing you can do and start there. And then the next time you work, whether it's immediately afterwards or the next day, you will already have a foundation, whether you realize it or not. I should probably have done some research on this. I'm really just kind of jumping in blindly here. So here's our folder structure. It uh, looks like this is a scripts folder. If I double click on that, it just opens up. There is, there's some player, looks like player controller code. It's got some physics. Looks like they have a, a good input package here, which allows us to jump and move around. And of course we have our little scenes down here, which makes sense. It really just seems like this input here, uh, like I said, I, I hit escape to capture the mouse and escape again to release the mouse and vice versa. So this is just boilerplate game uh, functionality here, like pausing. And then our player script, which is right here, looks like this controls the looks like controls the little capsule player. And I'm I'm guessing this character is something that's built in this character body 3D. Yeah, and it and it did take me to some documentation there. Yeah, and this will take some getting used to. This is much different, and we don't need to compare with Unity, but that's what I'm familiar with. And it I think a lot of us will try to make that comparison, but you know, let's just keep an open mind and try to look at it for, you know, maybe they have a better way of doing it. Maybe this makes more sense and and I like how this documentation popped up and it tells you which which class was inheriting it or which, which script. So that that's that's nice to see. And then I can click on that and kind of get back to the documentation of that script. OK, so that so these are do OK, that's interesting. So we have you have your player scripts and then it looks like you can actually pull up a I don't know, is it generated documentation? I mean, are these. Are these fields that are actually in the class or are these fields that inherited through the character body parent class? So yeah, so these are exported variables here like uh, sprint speed, jump velocity, and it looks like the documentation here could be auto-generated from, from just the class, the class structure. So that's pretty neat. And now the next thing I kind of want to look for is where's the game objects? Like what do the game objects look like? And it, it, I think I'm close over here. Okay, so here's the player. This looks like the player object. I guess one thing I'm trying to figure out is how is this script attached to the player? This looks like the character setup and collision detection for the camera. And of course the capsule running into things. I'm just trying to see if what is the mechanism for adding a script. So if I want to create, I want to create a new object. So I can't right click in here. This can't be the whole scene. I, I think I'm into something right now. I think I'm if I go back to the world tab. So this is the scripts tab. It doesn't say scripts, but it looks like it's just where the editor would be. And then this is the the overall, I guess, world object that everything is sitting inside. And now I can right click and I can add a child node. I wouldn't even know what to, where to begin. Let's let's add a 3D node. Let's add a a thing. I just want to add something. So this looks like a bunch of built-in things, uh, animations, multiplayer spawner. That's 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 right up my alley. Okay, automatically replicate spawnable nodes from the authority to see that makes sense. That's in line with what you would expect from a server authoritative networking structure. So your server will create an object and it'll spawn uh, automatically through the clients. So I might check into that soon. Yep, the same exact thing with this. So that's like if you have a uh, an object that's on your server, you would probably attach this to it if you wanted it to be replicated across clients. HTTP request. So this is this tells me if you're making uh, web service calls for something, you can use this. What I'm curious is if they have like a built-in WebSocket support or something uh, for TCP or UDP connections. I don't think that would be this, but I don't see anything else there for the networking side of things. But again, I'll, I'll get to that. I just wanted to add something really quick. So after about 10 minutes of 
searching through the documentation, I finally found what I believe is how do you just create the most basic 3D object, which I really like to start with because if, if you don't have the basics, how are you gonna build on that, right? And let's just create a 3D node and we'll name it, how do I name, how do I rename? And let's just name it our test 3D node. And then we can add apparently meshes that will represent the different type of fundamental shapes that we can work with. So what we can do is let's select it and we're going to add a child node and we're going to select mesh instance 3D, which I guess I've already got selected here. So we'll select that. And oh, look at OK, so this is so this is our basics right here. We, we add a node which we see here, we add a mesh instance 3D. And then if you click over under mesh, under the mesh instance 3D parameter, you can see we have our primitives. So our box, our capsule, cylinder, we have a plane. So this is like the example of in Unity, or this is the equivalent in Unity if you were just gonna add capsules out of the box. So, so this has just like one or two extra steps trying to create the, the node and then the mesh. And then you'll be able to select the capsules and boxes and so on. I, I want to select a box because I like boxes. So we'll select this box. I, I, I don't know what this is going to look like now. So I, let's just have a look at the scene in 3D. And we have a box. So I'm happy. I created my first object here live on camera. I had no idea what this was going to do. And I feel very accomplished today that I was able to create something. So. I'm going to sign off here and I wish you guys the best of luck with our journey from here on out. And it, it looks like Godot will be a fun option to play around with. And of course, there's going to be a learning curve. So go at your own pace and hopefully we can all have some fun learning together. All right. Thanks for watching.